everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to talk about my August anticipated reads. So you guys, the summertime is just booming for new releases and things coming out that I am so excited about. And so I tried to pare down this list honestly because there are so many things coming out that I'm either fully, fully excited about or kind of interested in. And so I took out all the kind of interested and I still have quite a bit. So grab a snack, grab a coffee, whatever you need and let's talk about all these books that are coming out. Now, I am not going to prioritize these books by golly. I'm telling myself as much as I'm telling you. I'm not going to prioritize these books because um, these are all books that I'm really excited for, but I also have a whole list of backlists that I'm really excited for. So these are just the books that are coming out. Maybe I have put a lot on hold at my library. Maybe not. We'll see. So um, starting August 1st, we have Change of Plans by Dylan Newton. So Dylan Newton has written quite a few um, books that I like, and this one just sounds really interesting. It is about a chef who unexpectedly gets um, custody of three young girls. I think they're like five, eight, and maybe that tween age, and she's having kind of problems with all three. She's unexpected. This was she was not meant to like be their guardian, and so that sprung on her. And then a ex marine um, who I believe has a partial amputee. He's a partial amputee, maybe. Um, they literally run into each other, and I think it's their romance, but also them both just figuring out life, and I think it sounds so interesting. Maybe it's because I'm the mom of three girls, and um, I've liked this author before, but it sounds cute to me. It sounds like it will be a fun kind of rom-com with some relatable elements, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Next is In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros. So you guys, Rebecca Yaros is everywhere. Now, there's a couple people here on YouTube. Mainly, I'm thinking Steph from Steph's Romance Bookshelf. B book bookshelf? Is that what it is? I don't know. I will link her down below, but um, she's been talking about Rebecca Yarrow's forever, and I've read one, and I really like her stories, and now she just came out with The Fourth Wing, and it's everywhere, and I mean, gosh, I have, I mean, I don't have a copy, and I've heard you can't get them, so I'm, I have not read that book, but she also has In the Likely Event, and so this one is a book about a couple that meets on an airplane just a little bit before the plane goes down in the Missouri River, and um, yes, that's, that's that's their meat cute, if you can call it a meat cute. And life separates them. They're fine. I mean, they're fine. Um, I think he goes into like to some sort of army or um, some sort of defense unit. Um, she goes into politics or something. And so their paths cross a couple times, but the path, time is never right. And then they have a kind of dangerous meetup in Afghanistan where I think he saves her life. I don't know. Rebecca Yaros writes great military uh, romance. Uh, I guess. I mean, I would call it military romance. It definitely is not always military, but um, military themed romance. And she is always one that's going to tug on your heartstrings. Now, the fourth wing, I think, is kind of an anomaly um, in its fantasy and stuff. But um, anyway, I know I can trust her to write a story that's going to tug on my heartstrings and um, have kind of that military background that I think is really interesting. I grew up in a town um, really near to a army base, and so a lot of my friends have since married um, military men. And so while that's not the life I live, I feel like I am kind of on the periphery of it, and it's interesting to me to read about. Next is Gone Tonight by Sarah Pekinen. Um, I've liked a lot of Sarah Pekinen in the past. It's a thriller, and I don't know much about this, except it's a mother and daughter, and, like, the mom is not ready for the daughter to kind of spread her wings and go on, and the daughter really is, and I think mom's got some secrets. I don't really know. Um, sounds interesting. I love mother-daughter things. I love thrillers, and I trust Sarah Pekinen. Um, Not to be, like, she's not my favorite, but we'll see. Uh, next is The Trap by Katherine Ryan Howard. So this is an author that I have heard a lot about, uh, but have not actually read anything from Katherine Ryan Howard. So she is a thriller author, and this one is about um, a sister, a girl named Lucy or something. I can't remember her name, but her sister goes missing in a series of kidnappings of, like, adult women. And it's an, in Ireland, I believe. And now Lucy, our main character, wants to figure out what happened. And, of course, um, there's probably a lot of danger involved in her as she tries to figure it out. But we'll see. And I think the kidnappings happened, like, in the 90s. And it's like a they're just still unsolved. And so, I don't know. Sounds interesting. Next is The Deja Glitch by Holly James. So this is one that I um, just am interested in because I've been reading a ton lately of the Groundhog's Day trope. Not intentionally, but kind of. And so this one is a 
Groundhog's Day trope about a day that keeps happening over and over and the it's a romance and the guy knows, like he remembers every day. The girl does not. And so I'm kind of getting some like 50 first dates vibes, but mixed with Groundhog's Day. I don't really know um, much about it, but it sounds sounds unique. And like I said, because I've been so immersed in this Groundhog's Day trope, I'm kind of wanting to stick with it. So we'll see. Next is The Princess by Wendy Holden. So Wendy Holden, I think, writes uh, quite a few different like royalty um, fiction stories about like about, I think there's one about Queen Elizabeth. I can't remember who all they're about, but this one is about Princess Diana. And I am just fascinated by Diana's life and her legacy and what happened. And um, I remember when Princess Diana died, I was young. And I, in fact, I was babysitting with my sister. If my sister is watching this, she, my sister is low-key kind of obsessed with Princess Diana. And um, like, I, yeah, so I remember when that happened. But anyway, this is a fictionalization of her life, I believe, uh, just before meeting Charles and then her for early years of marriage, maybe. Um, I don't know. But I, like I said, I'll read anything, Princess Diana. This is fiction, so we'll see. And then last on August 1st is Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. And this is a detective um, that is trying to find a missing person. This person, like it was seen on CCTV, um, she went down this alley and never came back out. And the case, it's a detective, and the case is unexpectedly close to home in the sense that uh, she finds out that if she figures out what happened to this girl, she'll lose everything. So she is trying to not figure it out. In fact, she is trying to frame somebody else so then her family is safe. Interesting concept, something I have not read before, um, similar to like the chain and stuff that makes you think like what would happen, um, you know, what would you do if your family was put against solving, a, solving another crime? I think it'll be interesting. Next is August 8th. So, um, Who We Are Now by Lauren Chamberlain. This sounds like my ideal book. It says, four friends, 15 years, small choices of early adulthood that change uh, the course of our lives. Love it. That's all I need to know. That is all I need to know. Female friendship, woohoo. That sliding doors trope of like what could have been and how that impacts our life, um, I think is fascinating. And so I, this sounds like my perfect book. Next is uh, Dark Corners by Megan Golden. And so this is the Night Swim sequel. So if you read the Night Swim, um, the, then this one's coming out. I have not read the Night Swim. So technically, I could probably take this one off the list because I would need to read the Night Swim first. But if you are a fan of Megan Golden, um, Stay Awake, I did read. And it was good. It was on the on the mediocre side or on the good side of mediocre. Um, and so I'm really intrigued. And I would like to binge the two back to back. So we'll see. Um, next is A Perfect Pairing by Cheryl Lister. So this sounds like a women's fiction summary kind of thing. And the cover is very summary. And it's about uh, the sisterly friendship between a group of women and a second chance at love. So it's compared to, or it's said for fans of Jill Chalvis and Jenny Hale. Um, both authors that I, I like, especially Jill Chalvis. And so I think it'll be great. Next is None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. So I actually already read this a while ago because I have an art copy and I love it. So this is about a podcaster who has um, a podcast, obviously, and she meets a f uh, woman at a bar. She's celebrating like her 45th birthday. This woman is celebrating her 45th birthday and they are birthday twins. And so then this other woman wants to be on Alex Alex's podcast. And she says, like, Alex's podcast about is about women who have overcome things. And she's like, well, what if we do a, a podcast about me as I'm currently going through things? And so this woman infiltrates her life and things get dark and twisted. And I don't want to say a whole lot from there, except this has short chapters in, in typical Lisa Jewell fashion. It is it, it's so good. It had me on the edge of my seat. And um, we know that the, the podcast that she, they're working on gets turned into a Netflix series called like, I'm Your Birthday Buddy or something. And so we get um, scenes from the Netflix show. And like, we just, we really get behind the scenes. This is one that does a podcast element so well. And it's, it's awesome. I would highly recommend. 
Next on August 8th also is The Blonde Identity by Allie Carter. So this one, uh, the cover gives me very Finley Donovan vibes. And I think from the synopsis too, it's about a woman, um, a road trip story about a woman who wakes up with amnesia, but she is twin sisters with a spy, I think. And so um, she teams up with a like grumpy operative to stay alive and maybe I don't know, try to do the spy stuff. I don't, I'm not sure exactly, but um, it sounds funny as well as like mysterious suspenseful, very similar in the uh, Finley Donovan kind of realm. So that's my expectations. I don't know. Next is the last one by Will Dean. So this is one that I actually just saw on G- Gabby from Gabby Reads, um, her channel. She just read this. And just hearing her talk about it made me want to read it so much. So it's about this woman that goes on a cruise. And then one morning she wakes up and it's a ghost ship. She is the only one on this cruise in the middle of the ocean. And I like that sounds terrifying and also like just really atmospheric. Gabby loved it. And so I, I'm really intrigued to try this one. Next is August 15th. Um, we have The President's Wife by Tracy Anderson Wood. And this is about Woodrow Wilson's wife. Now, this is a fictionalization. So it is a novel. It is not true. But it is about Woodrow Wilson's wife, Edith, I believe was her name. And um, she kind of becomes, she's I think she's widowed before and then marries Woodrow Wilson. And uh, she's a strong lady. And she kind of has opinions about things. And then um, she kind of assumes a lot of the roles of the presidency while Woodrow Wilson is struggling with things behind the scenes. And um, so it's, it's that situation explored in a novelization. So sounds interesting. Next is The Trade-Off by Sandy Jones. So Sandy Jones is one that I feel like is kind of a divisive thriller author. And a lot of people either like her or don't. Um, I typically do like her. They're not the deepest, most hard-hitting things, but they are good. And this is about, um, the synopsis was a little confusing to me, but I think a celebrity is killed like when he or she is hounded down by um, reporters. And so we get the story of an editor and a like rookie reporter from the Globe. And so I think uh, they're trying to figure out what happened and kind of tabloids roles and things but I'm I'm not really sure honestly just Sandy Jones um I'm gonna read it so now we're on August 22nd um I'm not done with you yet by Jesse Q Sutanto and this one sounds interesting so this is about a writer who is kind of in a rough spot in life and her husband like her marriage isn't good her writing career is not good whatever she thinks back to a time when she's happy and that was in her college years at Oxford and she had a best friend um that they were going to school together and now they have lost contact, but now she sees that the best friend um, is going to be in New York. She's on the New York Times bestsellers, and so they reconnect, and she's like, says, come, let's meet up, and so she's like, okay, and it says some friends are worth killing for, so she, and she says she will not lose her best friend again, so don't know. Sounds interesting. Next is Burlington by Heather Dixon. So this also sounds like a thriller that I could really enjoy. This is um, suburbia. It's this woman that moves into suburbia and thinks that everything's going to be perfect. Well, there's this kind of clicky group of moms in the school group. And one of them goes missing or dies or something. And um, we're we're trying to figure out what happens. So I think it's kind of rich people behaving badly. What's more important, fitting in or discovering the truth, kind of uh, secrets, all of that kind of stuff stuff that I generally love. Next is Trail of the Lost, The Relentless Search to Bring Home the Missing Hikers of the Pacific Crest Trail by Andrea Langford. So this is one that's coming out by Hashed, I think, um, is the publisher. And I just saw this title and I'm super intrigued. It is a true crime nonfiction about a bunch of hikers who went missing. And um, I've read a couple like that that I I'm just fascinated by, but it's a, it's a fine line between um, a good amount of like hiking and and nature and informative stuff uh, versus like too much. I feel like it, that's an easy line to cross if I will enjoy it or not. And so I like knowing uh, enough to make it atmospheric, enough to make me understand these people's passion, but not so much that I get bogged down. So we'll see how this how this strikes. 
Then we have August 29th. Um, so Rain, which is the American Royals number four by Catherine McGee is coming out. And I'm just about to start, like as we speak, just about to start American Royals. And so um, if you are a fan of the series, which I know a lot of people are, number four is coming out. And maybe this is going to motivate me to binge. I don't know. We'll see what I think of the first. But it would not surprise me if then I binge all the way to get to number four. Next is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. So Angie Kim is kind of another big name, and uh, I don't think I've read anything by her. I might be wrong, but I don't think so. And this one sounds really intriguing. This is about a father and son that go out on a walk, and the son comes back, like a either adult son or teenage son or something. The son comes back bloody and alone, and dad's missing. And I don't know, like, I think the first line in the book is something like, we didn't call the police right away. So I don't know. I'm assuming there's some family drama, some family secrets. And uh, I feel like she does a lot of good commentary and like introspection and things in her book. So I'm hoping it's not too literary. You guys, if you've read Angie Kim, let me know if this is too literary, but um, sounds interesting. And I think there was a witness too that has some sort of uh, condition where he or she cannot speak. So, I don't know. Sounds intriguing. And then last is The Breakaway by Jennifer Weiner. And now, this one, I just from reading this synopsis, I have not like heard her speak about it or anything, but it seems a little bit autobiographical because it is about a 34-year-old woman who um, everything seems to be good. She's about to marry her high school sweetheart. She has a good apartment that she's been in a while. Um, I think she's got a good, she likes to bike, and she's got a good biking club. And now I know Jennifer Weiner is really big into biking and does long treks and and different things like that. And um, she, this, our main character is plus size and she is at, at good peace with that great body positivity, all of that kind of stuff. Everything seems to be fine, but something just doesn't feel quite right. So she agrees to lead this um, bike, bike excursion. You guys, you can tell I'm not a biker. I mean, I have a stationary bike downstairs, but like, I don't know, bike trip um, from New York to Niagara Falls or some New York City to Niagara Falls or somewhere. And so she's like, okay, cool. This will be a couple weeks that I can get by myself, evaluate if this is the guy I want to marry, what I want to do, all that kind of stuff. And she runs into um, this guy she had amazing chemistry with and kind of a one night thing because it's her high school sweetheart. But I think they like went to high school, were, were together, broke up for a while, and now they're back together. And so in the interim, um, she had this night with this guy and he's on the trip. Also, the dynamic between her and her mom, I think, is explored as her mom is kind of um, – diet culture fat phobic, um, not like constantly trying to change her plus size body. And I think her mom goes on the bike trip too. So there's mother daughter stuff. There's romance stuff. There's second chance. Maybe I don't, I don't know. But, and like I said, um, there's from the synopsis, I was gleaning some things that I feel like would maybe be a little autobiographical of Jennifer Weiner, just based on the books that I have read by her and what I know about her. So I don't know. I love her. Um, generally I really like her. So sounds interesting and something that I will really enjoy. So that is a ton of books that are coming out in August, all of which I want to read immediately. I don't know how many I'll get to. There are so many great books and so little time, as you can see by my shelves. But that is it. Let me know if you're excited about any of these or what your thoughts are. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.